We start in Gaza, where the World Health Organization has described the Al Shifa hospital as a death zone, following a brief visit to the complex by a UN team. Officials spent an hour at the hospital and reported evidence of shelling and gunfire and the, and the site of a mass grave. The Israeli military has surrounded and occupied the hospital for days, claiming a Hamas command center lies beneath it. That's been denied by Hamas, which is designated as a terrorist organization by many Western governments. On Saturday, hundreds of people, including some patients, left the hospital on foot, making their way through Israeli armored vehicles on the streets. Around 300 critically ill patients remain at Al Shifa. The World Health Organization says it's now drawing up plans for their evacuation. Meanwhile, the Hamas-run health authority says at least 80 people have been killed in two Israeli airstrikes on the Jabalia refugee camp. They say one hit a UN-run school that was being used as a shelter. The White House has said Israel and Hamas have not yet reached a deal on a temporary ceasefire. It follows a U.S. media report that the two sides were close to an agreement to free dozens of women and children held hostage in Gaza in exchange for a five-day pause in the fighting. This report from our correspondent Mark Lowen contains images which some may find distressing. The echoes of history are beating loud here. For the Palestinians last fled in such numbers 75 years ago when Israel was created. And now, once again, hundreds of thousands are on the move, these crowds fleeing Al Shifa hospital, saying Israeli troops ordered them out. Israel insists the hospital asked for their evacuation. They take what they can, not knowing if they'll be back. Dr. Ramez Radwan from Al Shifa says the Israelis warned them to leave, with horrors left behind. The wounded are in very bad conditions there, he says. With a lack of staff and medicine, bacteria are growing in the wounds. It's a miserable situation. For some, fleeing takes time, even if the bombing was all around them. Majed was a patient at Al Shifa, no longer a place of healing, but the World Health Organization says a death zone. I was next to my house door and they bombed the place next to us. So I got injured, me and my cousins, and my other cousin died. At Al Shifa Hospital, there is no food and no drink. We get shot at. They enter whenever they want and leave whenever they want. And in Gaza City, the battles still flare. This footage released by the Israelis show them in active firefight, one of the Middle East's most powerful armies held back by a force far inferior in numbers, but still capable of resistance. Israelis too have been on the move, but in protest, calling for their government to prioritize the release of the hostages, almost 240 still in Hamas captivity. They walked from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, her and her nation's trauma deepening with every step. Today is my uh, husband's birthday. He is uh, 63 and his mother, Yafa Adar, is Kipnel. She is uh, 85 years old and uh, we are not uh, with her and we are marching. We are marching to Jerusalem to, to bring her back. To, to, sh to shout and to say that she must be here back with all the, all the equipments. Uh, we don't have time. We don't have one hour more. We don't know if she is alive. Benjamin Netanyahu is under immense pressure at home and from abroad, but he's still standing firm on calls for a pause in the fighting. And amidst reports that a hostage release deal is being drawn up, he's dampening expectations. Many in the world demanded that we not enter the Gaza Strip. We entered. They pressed that we did not enter Gaza City. We entered. They warned us do not enter Al Shifa, even though Al Shifa served as a major terror base for Hamas. They pressured us to agree to a full ceasefire. We refused, and I conveyed, we will only agree to a temporary ceasefire and only in exchange for the return of our hostages. But for how long can this continue? 
Twin Israeli strikes around the Jabalia refugee camp in northern Gaza on Saturday are reported to have killed at least 80, including 32 members of the same family. A nightmare scene on constant loop. For Gazans, it's there every day. Mark Lowe in BBC News, Jerusalem. And we'll be crossing live to Mark in Jerusalem in just a few minutes.